Hello, 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 and welcome to tutorial number 23 of the series where we're going to be taking a, another look into a workflow or, or a tutorial that we've already covered in this, in this channel. And that's going to be um, the Game of Life tutorials. So we're going to be basically rebuilding um, what we've already done with new functionality and with additional optimizations for the previous script to be working quite faster and also without any bounds. And I will be explaining everything as we go through it. So this script right here in the top is the one that we had previously. And if you haven't followed uh, along with, with this uh, tutorial, I can just quickly show you what it does. Basically, if I just have, um, I don't know, some, some form here, and I set multiple curves here, like that, it kind of grows uh, a form for me. And the way it does that, it uh, basically uses Conway's Game of Life um, logic uh, on, on a cellular automaton and uh, records every, you know, every generation of the cells into separate layers and then just uses a marching cubes algorithm to mesh them into, um, into a final shape, right? Um, so, so the main thing is if you haven't followed along and you're interested in that kind of stuff, I would suggest going to, to my uh, channel and, and scrolling down until you'll see 2019 tutorials 2D Game of Life and 3D Game of Life. These two guys right here, right? Um, so these are the ones, or rather the final output of 2019-3 uh, tutorial is going to be what, we're, what we'll be rebuilding. So I will not be... Um, focusing on the on the logic behind it and so on because everything is explained in those videos instead I will be focusing on um, actually rebuilding it and this is uh, my first attempt at doing that I've already of course built a test you know test script to just see if it works and it seems to be working quite well so every time when I'll get stuck I'll just kind of quickly glimpse at what I've already done so, first thing is that this script is quite slow if we increase the, 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 the grid amount. So let's say if I do 25 by 25, you can see how, I mean, it, it, it lags out quite, quite a bit, right? It still calculates, but it's, it's, it's very, very laggy right and in, in the way it calculates so i'll be optimizing that and the second thing is notice how it's always clipping um like this cellular uh, cellular growth is always being clipped um in within these uh, this rectilinear boundary so we want to get rid of that we want it to be unclipped uh so basically we will just calculate um a grid as big as we need in, in places where we need it to be. So those are two main optimizations that I'm going to do and they should introduce quite interesting behavior as well. Um, let me now just select the old definition and just hit delete. I'll just delete it altogether and this is going to be my, my notes so I'll not be kind of just going through those, but instead we'll be building everything from scratch. So the way previous definition worked was we had a grid of points and every point needs to um, know how many of its neighbors are alive or dead, um, or either, you know, are, uh, how many points are there and are, are not there, I guess. And there, there were, um, the, the way we did it was we would shift the list of the tree branches and the list indices. And that would introduce a lot of, of, of problems. 
and competition problems uh, later on once we wanted to increase the grid. Instead, what I want to do is I want to first set up, you know, a star starting condition. So coming back here to Convy's Game of Life, there's always, you know, that generation zero, generation of cells um, at time frame zero, let's say, the first generation. I want to set it up here. Um, to do that, I need to say what's the what's the size of my cell in, in, in that world, right? So what's the gap between the points? Um, and I'll just say 10 units, doesn't matter. So I'll just create one point here and I'll just perhaps move it to the side by 10, move it, uh, or copy it, sorry. 10 again, maybe here, I don't know, maybe minus 10 here. I, I have no idea what's, you know, what this pattern is going to make, but we'll, we'll see. So we have this pattern here and I will double click on my um, screen here and reference in those points as, you know, as points. Right click, set multiple points and there, there we have it. So before we would cr um, the, the, the previous version of, of this algorithm or this script would uh, make us generate a grid uh, uh, around these points and uh, in, in, in doing so we would be kind of checking whether or not a point is on a grid uh, or not on the grid. But instead um, there's, <clears throat> there's a faster, faster way. Um, if we just say, you know, okay, so how many neighbors does this point have, right? Well, it has one, two, three, four, four neighbors, right? How many neighbors does this point, point have? Also four. What about this one? This one has two neighbors, right? What about a point, uh, an invisible point um, in, in, in the space? How many neighbors does, let's say, this point have right here? Well, it has also four neighbors. So we need to kind of incorporate that and then calculate that. Um, so the way I'm going to do it, and now I'm going to kind of start checking it. <laughs> um, the way I'm going to do it is, first of all, I'm going to just talk about just these um, points which are currently alive, which are here. So I'll just create a rectangle around them, rectangle. And I remember that the, th the size of my, the, the spacing between my cells uh, or between my points is 10. So I'll just create a panel saying minus 10 to 10. Uh, slash slash minus 10 to 10, enter. And with this panel, I can create, uh, if I plug in this panel to X and Y of the rectangle, it's going to create, around each point, it's going to create a rectangle that is right um, reaching um, the, the, the neighbors on the negative direction and the positive direction in both on both axes, right? So that means the rectangle size in itself is 20 by 20, but actually it's it's as if the the radius of the rectangle is 10. So minus 10 to 10. Okay, we have that. And now what? So now we need to measure, let's say this point right here has a rectangle that goes here. How many points does this rectangle intersect, right? So to do that, I will just uh, ask for in curves or a point in curve component, this one. And I will connect my points, these guys, to the P input here. And curve, for curve, I will connect my rectangles. And in doing so, um, actually, I think I'm missing one. Yeah. Uh, in doing so, it's not going to really work out because it's going to just say, all, always it's going to say two. Uh, and <clears throat> if I hover over the output of uh, the, the 
in curve component, I can see that zero means that the point is outside, one is coincident, meaning that the point is right on the, on the curve, and two is inside. So for some reason, it only gives me six answers, and I, I don't really, I, I need more than six answers, right? Because even for this one, for this rectangle right here, I should have much more than six answers. So uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be right-clicking on the rectangle output or right-clicking on the curve input uh, right here and choosing to graft it. When I graft, every rectangle is going to be separated and, and calculated separately and it's going to check with every point separately. Meaning that now I get for each rectangle, I get an answer for every point and it really matters. So now, let me double check. I, I keep forgetting. <laughs> um, yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. So now, um, I need to ask how many points are coincident or right on each of these rectangles. So I'll just ask for equality. Equality, is it equal to 1? One. 1. There we go, because 1 is coincident, right? We already covered that. So now if I connect equality to the, the, the answers here, I can see, you know, point 0 is not intersecting with rectangle 0, point 1 is intersecting with rectangle 0, point 2 is not intersecting, point 3 not in intersecting, point 4 is intersecting, and so on, right? So I can do um, mass addition and just add them up into numbers. So uh, perhaps this one is a bit tricky to, to understand. False and true is exactly the same thing as if I type in number, and connect it like so here is exactly the same thing as zeros and ones. Like zero is false, one is true, right? So these are interchangeable. When I add up all of the trues, or rather maybe I should do it this way, mass addition, and then check, you know, this needs to be two because I'm adding zero, one, zero, zero, one, and zero. So I'm just adding two ones together, and that one becomes two indeed, right? Um, so keep in mind that true and false statements are interchangeable with zeros and ones. Okay, I have my numbers here. Um, and this is exactly, you know, how many neighbors does each point have? Because, you know, this point has this rectangle and this rectangle intersects with one, two, three uh, points. To check that, I can do point, uh, not point, um, text tag 3D. Location is my point component here. Text to display is my, oh, uh, I need to flatten this out, flatten, because it was grafted. Uh, and size, I will just choose like five, I don't know, five, yeah. So I can see that this point has three neighbors, this point has four neighbors, this point has five neighbors, and so on. Super, that's exactly, you know, what, what we would expect to see. Okay. So here we have the answers to how many neighbors each life point has. And I'll just create a component, uh, again, a number component, and I'll just rename it how many neighbors each live point has. There we go. And I'll just probably make a group here like that super or actually let's um, let's do it this way I'll disconnect this point component and remove it from the group create another point component here just to make it a bit more clean add to group okay so good start but now we need um, to check for 
all of the dead neighbors as well, you know, all of the dead space here, which is, uh, you know, for instance, this point here, this point here, those are not existent, but they should also check whether or not they should become alive for the next generation, right? So I could do, you know, the, the, the same thing, but before we need to actually, you know, create these points here, um, and to do that, uh, I don't, I don't remember. Okay, to do that, what we can do is we can take um, each of these points and move them up, move them up, or or not up, but uh, you know, along y-axis, upwards, along x-axis, backwards and forward. Backs, backwards and forward and to the corners as well. So let's see how how we should do this. What if, and let me actually move these guys somewhere here so that they're not in the way. What if we construct a rectangle? Again, you know, we have a rectangle and I'll actually reuse the same minus 10 to 10 uh, panel. So we have a rectangle that's minus 10 to 10. And then we, and it's by default constructed on 0, 0, 0 coordinate. That's great. And I will construct a point here as well. And also when you construct a point, it also gets constructed at 0, 0, 0 coordinate. That is good. And now I can create a vector right here, you know, and, and, and here. So I can, I can make a bunch of vectors from this point to points on the rectangle. And how do I do that? Well, I can explode. I can explode the rectangle into segments. And here I get five vertices for some reason, because I guess start and end vertices are on the same place, but I will just do discontinuities here. And discontinuities will indeed give me just four corner points. Okay, that's good. So I have four points here. And for exploded, um, for, for, for the explode node, all I care about is the segments and getting evaluate length, getting the center point of, for each of these segments. So evaluate length, length factor for curve elevation, I will say 0 0.5, right? Right in the middle. Or rather we don't, we will not be changing it. So I'll just use a panel, 0 0.5. So I'm just getting middle points for each of these, um, each of these curves. Okay, we have the corner points here, we have the middle points here. I will just merge them into one list by using merge tool, just like that. Disable preview of these guys. Okay, move them here. And now we have the center point and we have these, um, let's say directions um, or, or the, these points here. So I can create a, 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 a vector vector between two points vector between the center point and all of these points here so i get eight vectors yes eight vectors i can show them to you vector display with vector display like that so you can see you know the, the small arrow can i make the arrow bigger uh, screen size? No. Relative size? Okay. That's good. So we have our direction arrows. Let me delete that. We don't need to see them, but these will be used to move the points. Okay, so now the question is which points do we move? Let me group this and call this um, get directions for 
moving. Okay, so we have these points here and we need to get all of the surrounding points for, for this point cloud that we have, right? So what we do is we take these points and we move them, we move them and actually let me just create a point component here to make it kind of tidy and we move them, do we? Yes, we do, good. We take these points and we move them up with these vectors um, and you know every point gets moved eight times to, to, to those different eight directions. Okay so I'll, uh, what, what I need to do is since I have six points here and I have eight vectors here and I want eight vectors to be used for every point. I can either graph the point input or graph the vector input, doesn't matter really. Perhaps I should, yeah, it doesn't matter. So I'll just graph the vector input, graph it. And now you can see, you know, every, um, every point gets moved uh, according to the vectors or all of the vectors. Uh, right after I graphed it, I will flatten it here just to flatten the output of the movement, just to get all of the points here uh, to be clean, uh, clean in a way that um, uh, in a single list, right? So that I can actually clean them up uh, later on. So let me double check again. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, so now the the thing is that here we have a lot of duplicate points, right? Because uh, one got moved to the left, the other one got moved to the right, and they are starting to intersect. So I'll just use duplicate, or, or rather remove duplicate points component here. Uh, that's in Kangaroo 2. Uh, if you don't have it, you should download Kangaroo 2. So remove duplicate points and I'm left with 22 unique points, while here I had 48. Okay, we have 22 unique points. And now I need to get rid of the ones that are on top of the already alive points, right? Because all I care about is just getting these, actually, can I disable the rectangles there in the way? So I want to get rid of the points that are right here, right? Here, 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 under the alive ones. So to do that, I can type in curl point I never remember call duplicates, call points that are coincided within tolerance. Super. So I can use this one, call duplicates, where it asks me um, to give it points and the tolerance. The tolerance of 0 0.1 is absolutely fine, uh, but it asks me to give it points to operate on. So I need to use, um, I need to use this or or this doesn't matter. Um, so all of the alive points, maybe I should call this um, al alive points. Yeah, there we go. Alive points. How many neighbors each life point has, that's super. And here alive points, and this is going to become surrounding dead points, but not yet. Okay, so alive points, and then I will use merge tool to connect alive points with this point cloud right here of all of the surrounding points, including the alive points like that. And I'll just connect it to call point P input here. And for some reason I can see that the line is dashed. So I will just right click and flatten it out just to get rid of the um, data structure here. Okay, so we have that going on, almost there. If right now I check, it's going to give me an average, meaning that it's going to 
um, keep one copy from 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 both of these lists so it's still you know give, giving me that those points here and i want to remove them because this is my alive list and this is my dead list right so i want to remove the points underneath here uh, so to do that i just right click on the cull points node and choose cull all and now i can see that everything gets not everything but the points that come in here remove the points from here right so i'm only left with the surrounding potential points that that potentially can become alive and i will actually create a point container connect the point output of the call all and call this uh, surrounding dead points yeah for now they're dead okay and actually let me caps lock it dead points okay um so here it's asked how many neighbors each life point has and here i have the dead points and i believe it's going to be the same yeah it's absolutely going to be the same thing right so i will just be taking this um checking of neighbors copying pasting it here and just taking a look at what i need to change so here into this point input or rather let me delete it and we will figure it out without it so point in curve checking in uh, whether or not point is in curve is done with only the points that are alive of course right so i will be connecting alive points to here for sure and then each rectangle is created around a point which checks so in this case it's created around the dead points right here and then we get the result output and yeah that's it we don't need to change anything else here only that here i will change it to dead how many neighbors each dead point has okay and we have our answers so now i can actually um start working with this maybe we should position it like so and group this one up like that just to make it a bit more clean <clears throat> there we go so we're actually very very close to 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 finish um here i can actually for now text tag uh, 3d i'll just connect uh, or not connect create text tags like that and size uh, five less three size three color i'll just add a swatch and make it white like that and let me copy it for here like that and location is going to be the dead points like that and i'll make this black there we go so i can see for sure that everything works you know this dead point has two alive neighbors uh, this alive point has three alive neighbors and so on that's that's all we we care about um so now it's time to actually uh, introduce rules on how the points should behave right how the points should behave if they have x amount of live neighbors and the rules that uh, we will get is from conway's game of life these four rules here and i'll go through them one by one first of all any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies as if by underpopulation any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors fewer than two okay 
So either zero live neighbors or one. We can go here, how many live neighbors each live point has, or I should probably call this live cell has, just to make it clear, right? Uh, each live cell has, and I will ask, is it smaller than two? Or maybe for, for here I should create a slider with zero until eight. So is it smaller than two? I believe it's like that. Let me just double check, yes. Is it smaller than two? Okay, that's the first rule. Um, and then it should, you know, uh, it, it will, die right with, with this one if it has less than two live neighbors okay next rule any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation any live cell again live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation Okay, so if it has zero or one neighbor, it dies. If it has two or three, it continues living. Any live, uh, so, so this one, we just remember it for now. Any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies as if by overpopulation. Okay, so zero and one die, two or three live, um, four, five, six, seven, eight, die. Okay, so I will ask, is the number of how many neighbors each life cell has larger than uh, three, right? And so is it four, five, six, seven, or eight? And I'll just connect it like so. So we have uh, two, two answers here, right? All of these are false. So neither one of these uh, live cells have uh, less than two neighbors. And that is indeed correct. Everyone has at least two neighbors. And here, larger, three uh, cells. So I believe it's this one this one and this one these three life cells they have more than three neighbors right so what i need to 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 specify is that either this or this you know if if either one of these is true the answer to one of these is true you should state true right so this or this needs to be true uh, a tool that does that a node that does that is called gate or you know this is true or this is true means that this is going to be true right so this is our def checking for for a life um, for cells that are currently alive and I can call this def check for alive cells right meaning that if the cell should die it should be called call pattern it should be called according to this pattern from the initial list of alive points, right? Like that. And now for the next generation, there's only going to be three points left because, uh, wait, why is this opposite? Uh, if, if, it, um, if the rule set that happens becomes opposite, then you can just right click on the culling pattern input like that and choose to invert. And now, you know, so these three cells, this, this, and this, they died because of overpopulation. And these one, two, three continue living on. Okay. 
that's it. We, we took care of the first three rules, right? Because they talk about live, live, live cells. And now the fourth rule is for the dead cells, right? The surrounding cells. Any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction. Okay, I can say here that actually, can I just quickly text tag 3D? So all of these are, are dead, right? These, these surrounding cells here, they are dead. Uh, so can I see like that three? So according to that rule, even though right now at this generation they are dead, this cell right here, this cell right here, and, and this cell right here, these two guys should become alive for the next generation. Okay, let's do that. Um, I need to ask, um, is, is this number equal quality? Is it equal? to three, to the number three, right? And if it is, um, no, rather if it's not equal, so inequality, if it's not equal, then we should cull pattern, we should remove from this list of dead points, right? So we are only keeping the ones that have three live neighbors. And again, the cull pattern is inverted. You can see that everything else except number three is kept. So I'll just right click and choose to invert again, just like that. Okay, so these two are have become alive, right? And these three have not died. And this is going to be our second generation. So I will just take this list of points, this list of points, and I will merge them into our, our, uh, a single list. So I can actually rename these. Um, let me create a point component here, and I'll just rename this stayed alive you know as cells that were alive and stayed alive and this one i can rename as became alive right and then we have a, a, a list of you know and actually i'll just flatten it out uh, point I'll call this point uh, component um, next generation. All right, so we have everything going for us, everything working properly. Now it's time to automate it, I guess. Let me double check. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Here I used and, but we will do that later. Yeah, let's YOLO it. Okay. So now we need to automate this. Before we do that, I will create a new point component and I'll call this point component um, a starting generation. Right click, set multiple points, and I'll just set these points that I have here. And in doing so, I can now right click the life points and choose to clear values. Okay. So I just prepped it for, for, for the loop. Okay, loop, anemone. Um, we are using anemone plugin, and I will be creating loop start and loop end. And again, many, many uh, tutorials about this. N no explanation whatsoever what it does. Um, just take a look at the previous ones. Actually, you know, even here, 
uh, where is it? Right here. It's uh, I, I've I've explained the anemone loop thoroughly, right in these two tutorials. So check them out. Um, I will be saying we will loop something ten times for now. Just ten. Uh, trigger. Uh, that's a button. Okay. And uh, for now, let's just have it like that. Okay, so starting generation will come into our D0 input of the loop start. And it's on, on step, on repetition zero, it's going to go out here and connect to a live points. Because of course, those points, you know, that I just drew are a live points, right? Then it's going to go through this whole shebang here. And once it's finished, and I'm just moving my loop end to the end of, of, of this hole, next generation of points is created, which is going to be connected to D0 and kind of come back through the loop here as our next generation, right, of a live point. And then it's going to be repeated again, right? So we're just creating a loop. Now I'll just disable preview of everything, hide these guys as well. Take a look here, reset, and just run it. And everyone dies. <laughs> okay, we probably need some uh, show selected. Probably some pattern that would actually work. Uh, so I'll go back to Conway's Game of Life and let's just see if there is some simple pattern. Oh, beacon, okay. Two, two squares touching on one corner. Okay, let, we, we, we can do that. So I'll just delete the points here, create a point, zero, and I'll just move it uh, to the side of by 10 and always use 10. 10, um, uh, 20, oops, that's, uh, that's too far. So I'll just take these three and move them from this point. Can I snap, please? From this point to this point. And here I have a duplicate, so I'll just delete one. Yeah, so this is the pattern, you know, of, of, of this one. Two rectangles. Right click, set multiple points. Okay. Hide. Will you work? No, you just, you just die. Why, why do you die? Oh no, what, what's up? You're not staying alive, huh? You're being called, only two reference points are left. Okay, um, text tag 3D. Now I'm just going to kind of double check what, what, what's going on, what's wrong. Um, the, the, the location, location is here, text is here. Mm hmm Oops, <laughs> wrong, wrong input here. Um, okay, so we have three, four, four. Why do you have four? You, oh, because you have one here. Uh, let me double check. Oh, my bad, my bad. Um, I, I did the wrong uh, pattern here. It's incorrect. Show selected. So these guys need to be disconnected. So I will uh, show. <clears throat> so I will be right clicking here, clear values. Okay, that's my mistake. Um, this one actually moves here and up here. And actually it goes, gets minus 10 like that. That's the pattern. Yes, that, that is the pattern of, 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 of this. 
So now it should work. Reset. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Hide that. So you can see. Blink, 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 blink. <laughs> blink, 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 blink. That's a very oh, underwhelming uh, pattern. I should have done this. Or actually, we can do it. Do it. <clears throat> Why am I opening up Blender? Uh, let's play around a bit more and then we'll continue show selected. Um, show these guys. And uh, delete those four. So it's three by three like that. Oops. Ten. And these guys are moved by ten, like so. Set multiple. Yeah, okay, that's good. That works. So these are called blinkers or oscillators, but uh, they seem to be working quite well. Okay, that's good. That means our, our definition works. So now let's make it nice. It's going to be completely, uh, from here on out, it's going to be a repetition of what's, uh, what has been done before in um, in, in, in my previous videos right right here um, but so I'm going to do it uh, quite fast to start things off we want to record every step and also we want to move every step upwards by um, 10 units right so to record it um, I will be just creating a new input here by zooming in and pressing the plus sign on the loop start and also by pressing the plus sign on loop end like that hit reset to make it kind of work and the way we record things is we keep adding to the list right so i will use merge and at first the starting generation is the first thing that comes into d1 as well as d0 right so that's our you know like the, the, the first generation here and then f um during the the loop second generation gets added here next generation like that right and then the next generation will come in and will get added here as well will that work <clears throat> wait Yes, yes, that, that will work. Okay, so now if I connect merge into D1, I can see that, well, it's, it's hard to see everything is overlapping, <laughs> but it, it, it will work. Um, it, it, it does record because here I can see that I have 72 points after 10 iterations. So that means it is recording. It's just we don't really see it. So to, to actually see it, I will move every generation up by 10 units. Move. So next generation is being moved up by 10 units. So first generation is moved by 10, second one is moved by 20 and so on. So here, this, uh, we will be using this counter and we will be multiplying we will be multiplying this counter by uh, 10 of course right because this counter basically just tells us which generation it is and it just multiplies it by 10 um, and thus we get the units for movement the problem with it is that the first generation is actually you know the counter will say 0 not 1 and 0 multiplied by 10 is zero um, which which means that it's going to be overlapping with our starting generation and we don't want that so I'll be fixing it by saying actually add multiply it by 10 but also add 10 as well just simple really simple math and that's all all it takes right for every generation is going to count 10, 20, 30, and so on. Like that, I connect it, connect the movement to Z. 
like this and now each generation is going to be moved up by set amount and instead of next generation coming in here I'll just connect it like that to merge all right and I'll keep in mind that it the moved version only connects to merge it doesn't connect to loop end to d0 the, because we do all of the calculations flat and then we move them right so uh, it stays at d0 without the movement and d1 gets the moved version of it okay so i'll just group that to not lose it and let's look at the loop end and hit reset and now everything moves up perfect <clears throat> that's exactly what we want to see so now since that works we can use um, we can mesh these these guys you know create a create a nice nice mesh from them I will use a point component here uh, for for sorry for d1 because that's where everything is moved and I'll just right click and call it uh, recorded points like that and I will create a data dam that's important we don't want every step to be meshed so uh, uh, for that we create a data dam and the nice thing about a data dam is that you can right click on it and choose that it should let through information only that it should let through information let's see every one second right so you just right click on it and you say uh, when will it let through the information so every second that's fine um, and to continue I will be using I can't use dendro dendro is, is quite shit for for this particular application I will be using cocoon uh, to, to make it work so I'll be using point charge right here with radius of you guessed it 10 because you know we have gap of 10 between the points radius 10 and strength of 1 so we, we have our point every point now has a charge and then I will just use cocoon cocoon plugins cocoon tool with um, let's start off with ISO value of 0 0.5 and then we'll see if we need to increase it or decrease it and cell size needs to also be 10 so I'll just reconnect the or, or kind of connect that slider to cell size as well and execute is just a toggle boolean toggle true like that so now when I use this ISO value slider, I can control the thickness of it a little bit. So I'll keep at, let's say, 0 0.8. Eh, 0 0.8. Now let's make it pretty. I will just use uh, Catmull Clark subdivision right here. Uh, uh, color swatch, custom preview. Make it blue oh that's not a nice blue why are blues not that good yeah whatever i'll use blue and let's say level is set to level two for subdivision a little bit more softer um and let's see how it looks like so that's what we get with the oscillator of course it's you know the, the pattern that keeps repeating so of course it does that if I were to reset the simulation you can see well it, it takes uh, it, it goes too fast let me do 20 um, 20 steps you know it's every time when I reset it updates every second so that's that's great okay let's see what we can do with it right because right now the tutorial is done, right? Uh, we have an optimized solution where we don't need to have an extremely high grid to make this work. For instance, I can see that um, if, 
let's say we want to have more growth in this of course it's going to mess up the whole pattern and so on but let's say we want more growth than we have here um, so I will not be messing around with death but I will be messing around with how many cells become alive so right now they become alive only if they have three neighbors but what if I say uh, also equals two like that and I will say and or 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 let's just see if this will work like that will this make it grow no they immediately died wait <laughs> sorry um, so that means it needs to we can't use or we need to use um, Oh, okay. What if in, in, instead of invert here, we use, we don't use inequality, but rather we use equality here and here, and then we use or for equalities, not inequalities, like that. It should work because it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, there we go. So you can see explosive growth because I've just introduced a new factor saying that if you have two neighbors, you should also grow like that. And now everything is crashing. <laughs> Oops. Let's see. It's, it's quite an exponential growth, right? So, so that wasn't the smartest thing to do. Uh, let's see if, if we can uh, make it stop. Seems to be, seems to have stopped. Okay, um, so to, to fix it, I will just change repetitions to five and hit the reset button and just, okay. What about seven repetitions? So of course, you know, if, if you make it grow so much, of course it's going to still crash. But, oops, 15 is way too much. Uh, 12. But also it's going to make some, some pretty cool... <laughs> pretty cool oscillators. Like that. Okay. Uh, so that's how you mess around with it. For now, I will not be doing that. I will keep it um, original. So I'll just change both of these to three, just to let you guys play around with it as you please. Of course, it's going to be you know in, in the video description, the file, so you can just download it and work with it. Uh, let me make this a little bit transparent, just like that. Let's go to top view, show selected, these points here. Actually, I'll just disable the transparency, uh, disable the preview for good. Let's see, uh, let's see what we can do that is cool. Uh, what are you? Glider gun, Gosper gliding, glider gun. Okay, let's quickly do this and then we'll call it a day. Uh, boom, boom, nope. Come on, minimize and uh, make this smaller. Glider gun, okay. So, this one goes minus 10. So we have this rectangle here, and then we have, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So copy it by 90. 
here, one goes down, minus 10, and then this one, or actually I can just do one side and then mirror it, yeah, um, so this one goes minus 10, and then by 10, nope, like here, and then kind of continues on, on that direction, then 10 here, uh, then, 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 needs to go up by 10, and to the side by 20, like that, and then up by 10, and to the side by 10, okay, these two, I will just, actually, I will not borrow them, I will borrow one of them, copy, and I will be deleting this one because we will be reusing it. So we have these two here and then one more, 10, and then these we can mirror. It should be cool, we will see if, if it's cool or not. Oh, and I'm missing one, which is going to be here by minus 20, like that. Okay, so we have that done and then from the point, uh, 10, 20, 30, 30, and then 10 up, a block of uh, 10, 10, yes, 3 by 2, and then this one goes, oh, this is also mirrored, okay, so this one goes up by 10, to the side by 10, then to the side by 20, and up by 10. There we go. Mirror that. From here to here. And I think we're good to go. So, uh, where is my grasshopper? Where is my... Oh, there, there it is. Set multiple points. Repetitions zero. So now let's just see. For now, let's just look at the recorded points, right? Not even recorded points. Maybe we just want to see. Yeah, we don't care about the recorded points. I just want to see the next generation. Okay. So that's the next generation, and if I increase the count... Yeah, that's gonna look real cool. So this is what's called a glider gun. And I believe it's going to be super nice once we make it work. So I will just connect recorded, coin, uh, recorded points back here, turn on the... The, the custom preview, go to perspective, and let's just see what's gonna happen. Why are you here alone? Should... Wait. That one is weird. But it should be there. Okay, sure, I don't... Yeah. Anyway. Um, da -da -da -da. Save. <laughs> just in case and actually uh, save Rhino file as well um, tutorial 20 that's not how we write 20 20 20 23 save super uh-huh and moment of truth repetitions 51 Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Actually, uh, let me wait, wait, wait. We will continue with this, but now I just want it to be uh, smoother. So I'll just straight up use recorded points to, to build it for every generation just to see better. But at the same time, I will, uh, where is it? 
I will decrease the level of, of Catmull Clark subdivision just so that it's faster, you know, to, 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 to calculate. Um, and how will we look at it? Maybe something like so. Okay. Sorry for that. Now let's go. Go for it. Mm -hmm. So this is in, 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 in 3D. This is a glider gun um, animation in 3D and let's go for future. So the, the reason why it's called the glider gun is because that every X amount of, of, of repetitions, every X amount of repetitions, it keeps um, and the, 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 it keeps spewing out these these gliders, which you can see here, right? So in 2D, it would look like something is just flying away. But in 3D, it looks like a staircase, which is super cool, I think. Uh, let me stop the simulation for a bit and let's uh, let's investigate, you know, what, what we got from it. So let's wait for it. Come on. There we go. So this is the first glider that was spewed out and this is a beginning of the second glider, right? That that is going to be spewed out. And it's a repeating pattern as you can see, which is super cool. All right, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so that means that this thing works quite quite well and I call this a success um, quite quite well optimized meaning that now you can work with really large chunks of data and still kind of have it work pretty fast I, I mean right now it's not working that fast because we're meshing every damn generation but if if i were to disconnect it and just look at the recorded points like that and hit reset i mean it's it's pretty pretty fast i think you know the the, the way it kind of goes through the lists and populates them and it doesn't slow down uh, for for every generation as well which is i think important Okay. So I will call this a success and I'll call this a day. And I will see you all either on Friday or on Sunday. I still don't know. Depends on um, if, if I'll have time. Right. So hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, every file is in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.